approval and had like three one-on-ones with producers every week so I very much enjoy not having so many meetings like it made sense when I was like art lead on 76 effectively art director having 20 to 25 meetings a week that makes sense that's literally the job some people are like why do I have so many meetings with food during the car that's, that is the job but then on Starfield like I was only starting to some stuff like lead sliding artists and like, keep dealing with programmers and stuff like that but everybody had all those, a lot of those meetings too because they're just has to be more layers of approval when you're talking about like 500 people and before a lot of those people had been there a long time like the average like, 10 years that people had been there it's like we trust you you've got it a lot of the stuff in skyrim and pod is frankly people doing what they wanted to do and that just isn't the case when you have a bunch of people who have never worked on the games and from totally different branches of the company that have been brought into the fold it's it's a different way of operating not to say it doesn't work it's just not how i like to make games i suppose i got that indie spirit of like Woo, let's do whatever i want do you need 500 people or could you actually have half as much stuff and it'll be fine <laughs> this is a lot like the amount of stuff that goes into those games is, it doesn't have to do that much like i know people want their money's worth and obviously you want really high production values and people are like oh the cost of games has gone up over time but on the flip side, I would argue, like, tools have gotten better. Like, so there are a lot of things that have gotten more efficient. Not every game needs to be, like, games as a surface with all these, like, piles and piles of systems where every game you know, has a crafting system in it. Like, you can, like, take it down a notch and, like, get a little bit focused and still have just a game that I think people enjoy. So this is where I, you know, so I have all these different materials. I thought, should I put, like, a tracking for how many arrows I have shot? <laughs> Probably like 20 million. I got like a little deer guy here to just, whoops, and just shoot him. Get a little blood spraying out. There's no nav mesh here, so he can't attack me unless I like tempt him. I mean, I grew up with like a bow, and we had an archery range in the backyard, so I've used a bow quite a bit. To me, it's like an inherently fun weapon because there's a tension there. People are like, oh, why don't you do like a gun or whatever? Like a gun, you point it and you click. But the bow, you have to worry about pulling it back and the delay there. You can't hold it back too long and then you know, like, start to shake. There's a lot of fun there and there's a whole bunch of tuning that goes into it. Like to this day, I'm like tweaking things like how does it drop? How fast does it go? What about the different arrows? Some fly differently than others. I think the closest parallel is to like the actual hunting simulators. You're like paying attention to their track and the wind direction. They can smell you also, so you have to pay attention to that, but you slowly get those powers yourself too, so then you can see the scent particles of the creatures, you can like feel how warm the tracks are, so if it's like that's a really ancient one or it was just there, it's all about like lining up that good shot and trying to approach it a little more methodically, I suppose. Having something interesting besides just the monsters, I don't want it to feel like, oh, it's this big empty world. I want it to feel epic, but always with those approachable goals that you can see. That way you're not bored and you always don't feel lost. And that, actually that's something I haven't touched on either, is that I don't want the mini-map and stuff. Like, the whole HUD in the game, there is no HUD. What?! Like, everything exists in the world. Like, if you want to see how many arrows you have, you pull up your quiver and you look. Yeah, it's, it's like that tension and tactile feel, and I just feel like too many games just go deep, deep down this UI rabbit hole where it's like everything has like an icon floating above it and all those things just like really take me out of the game and feel the design of the game. I think I want a map eventually, like that you can pull up in the book, but to look at. But then did you ever play Firewatch in that mode where you turn off the marker for where you are? That feeling and like the thought that goes into it and how that feels as a player is just lost in a lot of games and you're, you're just like like a fish with a hook in your mouth <laughs> like oh, i'm going this way uh, i will just spawn a new sasquatch and murder him yeah, or just restart it but they all have uh, fur simulations like so oh, it's wow actual hair because ue has like this whole hair system so it, there's like a regular model under there yeah, let me kill them all Handy button, you gotta have oh, the kill button. You monster. So I had to... Look at his frame rate <laughs> as he makes the game, and I'd be like, you're doing it wrong. For my job. <laughs> yeah, for, for your job, yeah. You grow the hair, 
and then you actually like there's a comb tool where you're like comb the hair has to flow this way and like a little bit shorter there giving him a little trim that looks too nice let's make it a little <laughs> messier like in the initial trailers like there's this weird deer creature that has like tons of horns way too many or antlers and people know what a deer is so it's like that's a deer but weird and like that's makes more sense versus giant tree dude you're like what do i do and i think it's kind of fun to have like little quirks to how each of them act and fight also just like having that specter of, of which ones people know and understand like i basically have a bigfoot like people know what that is He's huge and scary. He just kind of comes marching at you and takes a ton of arrows. <laughs> he knocks you off of cliffs. Super fun. But then some of them, I was just like, I'm going to go weird <laughs> and have some ones that people don't know what it is. Like, there's one that's like this vortex of sand slowly coming towards you. And you're like, is that even a creature? Like, what do I do? <laughs> so this is... Okay, guys, uh, I am done here. I'm going to stop my session. Thank you so much for paying attention to me. Uh, I'm going to duck up and, uh, yep, I don't seem to be getting anything done. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> it is one uh, fifteen in the morning. Oh, That's God. about right Active. for a, uh, a Tuesday. And uh, thank you so much for your time, guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, this session that I recorded will be available tomorrow on my stream. Sorry, I got to get display capture away and uh, video capture, display capture back up. My roadmap of what I've done so far and what's left on the game. Sorry, uh, Overwatch is, uh, I'm sorry, Blizzard is incredibly incompetent. They're the most incompetent company in the entire history of video gaming. You can tell because one of their five games won't even play on display adapter on a, on OBS, and that's how you know that uh, the, uh, they try to build the Overwatch League. They shouldn't have tried to build the Overwatch League. the The client couldn't handle it. So, I started the game around June of 2021. And yep, and uh, so there we go. And, and so I'm gonna stop here. Thank you so much for your time. Just a reminder, you have been watching a skycat.live. I am a full-time variety gamer all day every day. Put me on in the background. Click on the cast space to donate. Uh, Happy New Year's Eve. It is now January 2nd. And uh, all of the New Year's are kind of coming, or all the New Year's celebrations are kind of coming to an end. I am full of loot that I will unlock tomorrow. Thank you for your time. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care.